Hey everyone, my name is Vic and welcome back to another 2020 Caden Live video tutorial. Today we are going to be talking about motion tracking. But before we do, I just wanted to go over my system so that you can compare your experience with my experience as to the performance of Caden Live and what you may expect. I run an i7 processor, but it's quite old, it's an Intel i7-3770. I'm using Pop! OS as my distribution. Moving on to Kden Live, I have the latest version that's installed. It's 20.08.1. As you can see in this version, the interface is slightly different. So we no longer have the middle window for the effects. Now it's been moved down here. So we can switch between our project bin when we're selecting our effects and any compositions. So it's moved down here. You'll also notice that there is an audio mixer. So this is just the default setup and I haven't changed anything. So if you're following along uh, with this tutorial, then you should find everything, all of the toolbars in its default place. So let's get started. I learned about motion tracking when version, I think, 20.04 was released. And uh, I was curious and I wanted to learn more about it, so I did some experiments. So today, we are going to go over a couple of examples as to how to use this. So I brought in a simple video here. It's got no sound, but it's about 36 seconds long. We're not going to use the whole thing, but it's just... Um, this guy that's gliding and I think I'll probably cut this video so we'll bring it into our timeline I'm just going to ungroup and delete the uh, empty sound container the empty audio container here and I'm just gonna scrub through a little bit and I think we're gonna take maybe from here until the end of the video. So I'm going to cut it right here. And we don't need this part. Delete that and move it to the very front. So let's review what we've got. So we've got movement here of this guy flying through the sky and he's going to exit the screen. So in order to apply motion tracking to the subject, which is the glider in this case. We're going to effects. And the quickest way is just to type in motion tracker. And I'm going to drag this to my track, my glider track. Now you don't see any effects, but when I click on it, it's going to replace that um, clip monitor window. Okay. So if you don't see this, right you've got somewhere else click a different track that's clicked so I'm clicking on v3 v2 so when I get back to that screen I just click on the track that we've applied the effect to and now we've got it back we've got this rectangle here and I'll just move this to the front and we're gonna place this around our subject so I'm telling the program here that this is the subject that you need to track. We can choose our algorithm. I'm not exactly sure what the differences are, but in the Caden Live example that I saw on their website, they used CSRT. So we'll go with CSRT. The frame shape, it's up to you. We can use a rectangle, which is already there. Or if you want, you can use an ellipse which you can see, or we can use an arrow, which is going to point down to the subject. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use an ellipse because it's going to be a lot clearer, and I'm going to increase this to 5 pixels so it's a bit thicker. So we can see that we've enclosed our subject here. That's about right. I'm leaving all of the other settings at the default. So we haven't applied any motion tracking analysis yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch back to my project bin here so we can see that it's going to process this. So we'll click Analyze. 
and it's going to process our clip. So let's give it a second. Depending on how big your file is or how difficult it is for the program to track your subject, so that this might take a while. Okay, so now that that's done processing, let's preview what that looks like. So I've just got it at the playhead at the beginning here. So I'm just going to play this. And we should see that this ellipse follows the subject. So as it disappears over the screen, the ellipse kind of hangs about there in the end. I forgot to mention the keyframe spacing. So I would recommend that you don't lower this down too much. I think 5 is good. You can bump it up to 10 or bump it up to 12 or 15. Play with it. See how the motion tracker um, affects your subject. But don't bring it down to 1 because it's too much. And you'll see in a minute here what I mean. Now that we've collected the tracking data, we can copy the tracking data and apply it to a text or an image. Let's try applying it to the text. So I'm going to create a title clip. And this is just going to be a simple title. I'll just call it Glider. We're going to center that to the canvas and create title. So I'll bring this down to my timeline. And what we're going to do is we're going to apply motion tracking to this so that the text glider overlays or follows where this um, ellipse is. So now I have, I'm not sure if I've done it before, but what you do is you go back to your motion tracker. So clicking on my glider, copying the tracking data to the clipboard going to my glider now we can apply a transform effect so I'm just typing in transform dragging it down to the text here so click on the text so we can see our transform effect and what we'll do is click on the options and then import keyframes from clipboard I'm just gonna leave everything as a default click OK and now we see our keyframes here that have all been added. So those are your motion tracking keyframes. So what we'll do now is I'm going to hide this. So I've clicked back to the motion tracker. I'm going to hide the ellipse, push it to zero. So it's hidden. And I'm just going to click on a empty track. I'll move the playhead back so that we don't see any of the, uh, the options, you know, uh, the tracking data, this messy stuff. So I'm just going to click on an empty space and then press play. And as you can see, the text glider is following. And it's about roughly the same size as the glider as well. So that's pretty cool, right? You can use text. I'm just going to delete this. As another example, I'm going to bring in an emoji. So this is just an image file, whatever image file that you've got. So if you're trying to maybe hide a license plate number or, you know, hide someone's face and you want to easily do that, you can use motion tracking. So we've brought in the, the image here. So same thing, we'll go to effects, we'll apply a transform. And then from the transform, we can paste or import the keyframes. Leave everything as is, click OK, and there we go. So click on an empty track, and let's press play. So now my smiley face is hiding my glider. Cool? All right. So now, what if actually I want to make some adjustments. So we'll delete this for now. And what I'll do to demonstrate is I'm going to add an arrow image. Okay, I'll bring this down 
and I'll extend this out. Basically what I want is I want this arrow to be pointing at the glider, you know, as if to indicate like, you know, hey, this person's here. So we still have our data, our tracking data in our clipboard. So we can easily apply the transform. And then same thing, import keyframes from clipboard. So it'll apply everything. I'll just let everything at a default here. There we go. Now move that playhead to the top. But we've got a problem because I don't want the arrow to be covering the glider. I want it a little bit offset and pointing down to where it is. So we can easily do that. Now if you notice, when we talked about keyframes before, I don't want you to set it down to one because you'll have so many keyframes here that if you wanted to edit it, it's just going to be too much to edit. So what I mean is, if you don't want to have too many of these to edit, you can adjust them here. You can increase this number. Um, so let's let's actually try that. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to delete the transform. Okay, and I'm just going to hide this for now so that we're not bothered by it. I'm going to reset the tracking data. I'm going to bump this up to ten keyframes, which means it's going to take ten keyframes analyzing the uh, the motion of our subject. And I'm just going to switch back to my project bin here so we can see the processing time. I've hidden the, the, the ellipse, so we can show that back by putting it at 5 because we want to check. So let's go analyze. Now I've fast forwarded through that bit to make the video faster. So it's reanalyzed our tracking data. Let's go ahead and play just to make sure that it's still following. So it's still following our subject pretty well. Cool. I'm happy with that. So what I'm going to do is click back here. I'm going to hide the ellipse. So just set that to zero pixels. Okay. And I'm going to show my arrow again. Now we want to show the arrow pointing. So same thing, we'll go to effects, we'll apply the transform, and we are going to, just to make sure, I'm going to copy this again, so copy the clipboard, and then import. There you go. So as you can see, compared to before, we've got lesser keyframes to deal with. Now you can actually edit these keyframes. So we had a problem because we wanted the arrow to be pointing at the glider, not covering the glider. So we can actually manually edit the individual keyframes. So it's already set to smooth, so that's great, so that the movement is smooth. So what I can do is I've clicked on the arrow here so that the effects are shown. And individually, I can just move this up and then advance through the keyframes. Move this up so it's pointing. So it's a bit of manual work, but most of the heavy lifting has been done by the motion tracking algorithm. So it saves us a bit of time. And what I'll do is I'm just going to fast forward from this point on. Now, for the last few keyframes here, we'll notice that the glider actually goes off screen. So we see the arrow go off screen in that keyframe, and then it hangs out still here. So I want the arrow to go off screen as well. So what I'll do is I'll just kind of manually, manually move that over as well. And then we've got the last one here. It doesn't matter where you move it as long as it's off screen. There we go. So let's move this back and we should see that arrow pointing instead of covering the glider
and there you go hopefully you found this video helpful if you want to support the channel please subscribe um, i do have some links if you want to support me personally appreciate your time if you've got any questions then just type it in the comments i'll be more than happy to try to answer your questions until next time have fun hope you learned something today i'll see you later bye bye